What is up guys? <laughs> we just got to the gym and today is daylight savings. So it's Sunday the 12th and we got one less hour in the day today, which was, I woke up like really disoriented. I thought it was normal time. I completely forgot about daylight savings and I woke up and I was like, why am I so tired? I feel better now and sun is gonna be out one extra hour, which is awesome. You guys who live in Arizona, you guys are doing it right. I don't know why the rest of the world continues to change the clock twice out of the year. It's just kind of contraindicated. Anyways, <laughs> um, we are heading to the gym. I have some squats to do today. So you guys are gonna be seeing a Q&A video. I'm gonna be putting the workout footage over that. So you guys are gonna be seeing this workout. If you guys are interested in the full workout, it's gonna be in the description box. But aside from that, we're gonna go ahead and get into today's video. It's a Q&A, answering all your questions from my last Instagram post. There are a lot of good ones in here. So check it out, I'll catch you guys soon. Kevin Cinema asks, looks like you have everything you want in life, but what are a few things that you think are missing or wish you have? I remember this question and I knew the answer immediately and the answer is a dog. <laughs> a pupper. <laughs> you guys could probably tell from my last like four videos and I'm just like, dogs, puppies, let's walk by this one right now. Ah. Amanda, what does your spine tattoo say? There you go. It's like. <laughs> it says, um, it's my ambition is my weaponry, and it is a quote from a Nikki Heaton song called I'm Ready. I never thought that I was gonna get a tattoo, but I just heard it and I was like, yep, I need that immediately. So you went like right after? After, but I was always one of those people that was like, nope, you can never you don't put a bumper don't sticker. Don't put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari, like Lori Leslie Moss. I might have butchered that. Do you donate to any charities? If so, which ones? I don't donate regularly, but if I see a charity that I want to donate to, like if I'm on Facebook or something and there's something that someone's talking about donating to, I have donated many times, but just don't like announce to like usually. go fund go fund me and stuff. That yeah, you see. yeah. So like a few people have posted about GoFundMe's and stuff recently for like different friends and family. I actually work with bodybuilding.com and they have a great charity called Lift Life Foundation and Lift Life Foundation just helps build underprivileged schools gyms for kids and I think it's amazing. So yeah, I'm going to be doing that and working with them, um, donating as proceeds of one of my shirts that I'm making. You guys will see that soon. Yeah, you'll be able to donate to them via my website. So thank you for Stole my bar. So I'm doing 155 for three sets of six. Callum's doing the same. Danny Ellen1986 said, what's something on your bucket list you hope to check off this year? I really wanna go to Hawaii and I wanna go on a vacation instead of just, I feel like I travel a lot for work stuff and it's great and I love it, but I wanna like travel and go on a, like a beautiful tropical vacation. I haven't been anywhere tropical in since like 2011, so it's been a while, so Hawaii this year for sure. <laughs> Ema, you, Mund, okay. <laughs> Favorite Netflix show, if you haven't seen How to Get Away with Murder, watch it now. Oh, I haven't seen that, but I've heard it's really good. I watch Gotham a ton. I haven't watched it in a while, but I love Gotham. If you guys like Batman at all, if you guys like action, if you guys like drama, Gotham is like amazingly so well done. <laughs> yes, 2818, oops, part two. Why do you have coaches when you offer coaching as part of your business? AK, why don't you use your knowledge to take yourself through prep? Not trying to be snotty, just curious why you get coaches when you ladies are full of knowledge and highly educated. That's actually a super good question and it makes sense. I did coach myself for my first two preps and I could take it through it myself. I could do it myself, but when it comes to doing things on your own, Number one, it's super stressful. You don't know whether or not, like, 
it's always the right thing to do because the way you perceive yourself is way different than the way you perceive others. So if you guys ever catch yourself giving other people advice, but you struggle to stick to that advice yourself, it's kind of the same thing. Like you perceive yourself in such a different way, especially, especially when you're bodybuilding that although you have the knowledge and the know-how, you don't necessarily know how to do it for yourself because you're either too, too hard on yourself or too easy on yourself. So having someone else who has a number one watchful eye that you can be accountable to is super important. Number two or three, whatever. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. There's still so much that I learned from my coach on a daily basis and he's amazing and I'm constantly learning things from him, constantly getting insight and just having a second eye is so much better. And some of the best people have coaches for everything. Like an NBA basketball player, he doesn't just coach himself through his games. Like he is a coach that knows exactly what he's doing. And obviously the NBA player knows exactly how to play basketball pretty damn well, but he still is a coach. Even like the best business coaches have coaches. Like Tony Robbins has a bunch of different coaches and like like people that are incredibly intelligent have people that are also incredibly intelligent to keep them accountable, bounce ideas off of, and just make them better too. Cause again, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're not in the right room. Are you worried about losing any strength at all when you start a cut in April? How will that affect your powerlifting? I am not worried about losing strength in a cut and I'll tell you why. A lot of the time people think that they lose strength during a cut because they're lowering calories so they think they're supposed to be more tired. However, in my experience, it's more of just a placebo effect. So I try to just tell my mind like I'm not going to be more tired just because I'm eating a little bit less. That fatigue does come. But in my experience, it doesn't necessarily come until you're like, for me, in the past, I've only done cuts when I've been prepping for a bodybuilding show. And with this, I'm not prepping for a bodybuilding show. I only notice that I lose strength during a cut like the last few weeks, probably when I'm like, between six and four weeks out is when I start feeling like less strong. Again, it's more of a placebo effect and you can continue getting strong throughout a cut and it actually does really well for you to continue putting on strength. So don't worry about it. Copernicus underscore Johnson said, just started tuning into Bucci Radio and love it. Killing it with the quality content, A. Hey. Uh, releasing from the workflow is essential to maintaining drive. What are your top ways to release from the fitness business lifestyle? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Like actually taking a step back from just working, even though work is fun for me, even though everything I do, I enjoy doing, Taking a step back from it is super important for mental space. So I like to read, um, but not just personal development books, like fiction books, and I like to watch TV, and then just spend time with people and like go out to lunch, like for a fun, just like lunch date with a friend or something like that. Get my the real Wheezy. Okay. Oh yeah? Uh, what are your opinions on using birth control in the form of how the hormones affect your body, metabolism, and mood, especially while in prep? So if you're using birth control and you're worried about losing fat, I personally haven't had any hindrances while being on birth control. I've been on birth control for almost all of my preps except for this last one, but it didn't stop me from losing body fat. Everybody is different though, and I know some people uh, struggle a lot depending on how they react to birth controls. It's very individualized, and I I can't really answer that question in a blanket statement. I do have an IUD now, which is non-hormonal. So I would recommend uh, looking into that and asking your doctor if that'd be a good option for you if you're worried about how it's gonna affect your body. My name is no, my son is no. My number underscore is no. Rab underscore. Book recommendations for entrepreneurship or how do you go about starting your online platforms? Well, why don't we just do the book recommendation because I do have a podcast about starting an online platform. It's eight ways to grow your social media in order to build your business. Check it out on Bucci Radio if you guys haven't already. You podcast listeners, I love you guys so much. You're awesome. If you guys are listening to the podcast and you're fans of the podcast, leave me a review on iTunes. Some of you guys can't use iTunes and that's totally okay. But if you can, once I get to 500 reviews, which we're at like 430 something right now, I'm releasing a how to calculate your macros free ebook to my email list. So almost there and I'm so excited. So I have to release that to those people once we get to 500 and we're so close. There's only 70 left. But anyways, book recommendations. The first book that truly changed my life 
life. It was like the book that like I decided to stop going on the safe route with my career. I read the one thing. Check that book out. I'll put it on the screen right here. It was an amazing book. I have a couple other recommendations for you guys too. Relentless by Tim Grover. He talks about, he's like a sports coach and he talks about the kind of people that you are and the kind of people that you need um, that are successful people. They're like the grinders and they just never let anything stop them. They're called cleaners, so this is an amazing book. I also recommend The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. It's just a book about, it's a spiritual guide to enlightenment. It just changes the way that you think about life and it's just really a big eye opener. And then Outliers by Malcolm Galdwell and he does, Gladwell, he does a lot of really good books too, but it's just about the way that people that seem to have everything and they seem to be like the outliers in life and they're just like, they're really successful really smart whatever he explains like how those people are the way they are it's an awesome book so i recommend those i'm also reading code of the extraordinary mind and i also recommend the four hour work week by tim ferris i read that as well Nat Dot Bright said, this is related to physique. How do you explain to people that you can simultaneously love yourself and feel confident yet also have goals for improvement? Some people I know feel like these are mutually exclusive. That is a good question. Uh, when I had made that video called embracing your body, uh, being confident, how I feel about my weight gain, whatever, I got a lot of people that were obviously super supportive, but there was also some people that were still confused with me saying that I love where I'm at, but I wanna go on a cut. Obviously that's contradicting. Like I love where I'm at and I wanna stay there and wanting to go on a cut. It's not like I love where I'm at and I wanna stay here forever, Be, but like I don't wanna change kind of, I don't know how to explain this. I do know how to explain this. Ch wanting to change and wanting to improve and wanting to become a better version of yourself, regardless of whether or not you're happy with where you're at, wanting to change has to come from a place of loving yourself as opposed to a place from resenting yourself and resenting how you look. If you don't love yourself, you want to go on a cut, go on a diet, lose fat or whatever because you want to learn to like how you look, but it's it's different when you love yourself first and you just wanna become a better version of yourself, feel a little bit better. There's like, everybody has their like happy, kind of comfortable homeostasis weight and like look that they like. Going a little bit over that or a little bit under that, obviously like most people have like some insecurities when it comes to that, like I know I do, we're all human. You can still want to change and be a little bit better, but love yourself at the same time. It just, it has to come from the place of loving yourself. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. I'm so alone. We don't talk anymore. So Lady Fit said, what are your plans as far as competing? Any shows in the future? Hi Bernice. So my plans in the future as far as competing, a lot of you guys keep asking me this because I have not like announced that I'm prepping, I'm not having announced that I'm doing a new powerlifting meet. But for me personally, I have been doing a lot of thinking and I decided that competing has done a lot for me over the last three years. It has grown me as a person. It has made me a strong person. I've done the hard things. I have set deadlines for myself and I have hit them. I've hit those goals. Um, I've stepped on a platform. I've stepped on stage and there's, it's super, super fun. And I love the process. I truly do. But for me this year, I want to focus on personal goals and I want to keep myself accountable without having a deadline. I want to focus on health. I want to focus on becoming a more well-rounded athlete. I wanna focus on meeting my micros like all the time. Like I really do wanna like like fill my diet with like healthy foods and I wanna hit gym PRs in the gym with my squat bench and deadlift. I wanna hit a 145 bench, a 300 squat and deadlift. Those are like huge goals for me. Um, and I am gonna embark on this cut, but I wanna do it in terms of like having a goal that's not just a deadline for the stage. Like I don't wanna get super extreme for a bikini prep again this year, especially because my body's not ready for that yet. So I am going to be embarking on like a normal cut. It's not just, it's just not gonna be basically as long or as extreme as a bodybuilding bikini prep, but I am gonna embark on that starting April 10th. So I think that's four weeks away or so. So that's eight, so four weeks away. Um, so if anyone wants to start their cut with me, that would be awesome. We can do it together. You can like follow along while I'm doing it. And other goals for powerlifting me. I'm not planning on doing another meet anytime soon. I might do one closer to the end of the year, but I wanna hit a few gym PRs and like truly make progress before I consider doing another meet. So yeah. See
<laughs> Triesha underscore said, update on you and Brian location decision, him moving to LA. Can't see you leaving LA. Love you so much. I got this question like 20 times in this Q&A and Brian got in his last Q&A and we were just like, all right, we've talked about this plenty guys and we're just like not ready to like announce it yet. So yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. You guys really enjoyed the last Q&A and I'm glad that I split this into two because we had a lot of really good questions. So uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.